on today's show, we're going to be talking about speed. Do design systems genuinely make teams more efficient and speedy, or do they just add another layer of complexity? I'm Luke Murphy. I'm a design advocate at Zero Height, the design system management platform. I'm joined by my co-host, Michelle Chin, design systems and design ops consultant extraordinaire, and this is Design Systems WTF. Uh, so first off the bat, uh, eagle-eared listeners will probably have noticed the, uh, the intro change slightly, um, which is that uh, Michelle has is moving on from Zero Height, or has moved on from Zero Height, and is now being let free into the world to uh, uh, share design systems and design ops wisdom. Look out, world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm uh, terrified for what you're going to bring to the world. I, I don't know. I'm just talking shit now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but today we are talking about speed. So uh, this was my topic because I had a great conversation with the person I have to name drop in every episode, Amy Hoop. Um, I don't just only talk to Amy about design <laughs> system stuff. There's at least two other people. Um, but uh, one of the things that we were talking about, because I don't know, I do feel like that it's one of the things that a lot of people talk about when they talk about the value that design systems bring is it's efficiency and speed, right? Yep. Um, and it seems to be the standard measure. And Amy had the um, interesting point that she said, I don't think any design system that I've ever worked with has actually made teams go faster. Um, and the main reason for that is because it does add a layer of complexity and thought uh, a lot of the time. And also there's like the fact that design systems take time and educating people on correct usage and all the rest of it takes time as well. And I thought it was an interesting topic because I, I don't know, I'm still kind of on the fence with this. Like, do you, do you think that design systems make things faster or do you think that that should be the way that we view them? Um, I don't think it's the way we should sell them because clearly I feel like that hasn't worked for years. <laughs> um, and and if you listen to previous episodes, we definitely talk about that. I think I, there was one time where it did make things go faster, um, but that was just the one time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, okay. So I suppose, you know, we can really easily uh cover off how design systems do make things go faster because i do think that there there are like efficiencies and speed like benefits to design systems right but i also think they're pretty obvious yeah i get i, I obvious but do you think that like i guess like obvious in theory okay i don't know uh so okay, so so let's let's just let's just make sure that it's spelled out. We are talking about the same thing. So the concept reusable parts, so components and and tokens and and even you know if we get up to pattern level, the concept of having things that are reusable means that things aren't going to get like designed or built multiple times. Um, so we're saving time and effort um, on those things. Um, so there is something to say that um, if you're building the exact same things that you would have been building before the design system compared to after the design system, you will be saving time and you will be generally going faster. Yeah. But why is it problematic? I, I, I don't know why I'm asking you because I've definitely got thoughts. <laughs> I, because I think it just takes a long time for the design system to get built. Yes. That's part of it. So it doesn't seem like, like you have to do like an upfront investment. And I think that's also like why it's problematic of like fitting the design system in as like, a, I'll just, you know, carve out a couple hours every week to work on it. Um, isn't oh, really a yeah. good thing because you, you have to like truly invest in it to get all the things done. Um, but I think it's also like there is, is a user experience aspect to it too. Just because you made components doesn't necessarily mean you've, you're finished with your design system. Like you just mentioned like the education part, but also, you know, organizing your components so people can find them. If people can't find what they need, then they're going to spend so much time trying to find the component and to, to build it. So like, it's not, yeah. that's not very speedy. 
Well, it's not only that as well. I think that like uh, a lot of design system teams I see as well in the way that they approach, uh, especially component building, is um, that like they want to build the perfect component that covers off every single concept, which is probably not the approach that somebody would take if they were doing uh, like single. I mean, snowflake is not the right word here because we're not talking about design system components if there's no design system but like if you're building you know a button okay we'll use the button uh if you're doing a button right it's like it doesn't take that much time to just do the button that you need for that particular thing um eh, i mean you could say that there's you know a little bit of thought around like what kind of button it is whether it does fit in with others you know you might have to check to see what the standard is if there's no design system so you know there is there's like potential but at in reality like it's it's a pretty quick thing to do and i think that that's like if you told a designer here build a card here build a date picker like we have those things in our heads from how other products work and how we've done them in the past that means that we should be able to do it relatively quickly like obviously when you get into complex components so maybe date picker is a bad example um like those things can take time to build and therefore just dropping something in will be uh, infinitely quicker but when i feel like we then go into the realm of like when a design system person tackles say a button um i don't know it just staggers me sometimes like the amount of variance and different concepts and again it's like if you don't then have to go in and read the documentation to make sure you're using the right button and um figure out which variant it is that you need to use and like all those kind of things like those things do still take time and so like there is even i don't know there's like that level of like it's not necessarily going to make you that much quicker i don't know i'm kind of like talking myself out of it as i'm saying it yeah i i mean i i think it's just like we can overcomplicate things right so like i think a button's a good example because you can add an icon to a button you can add it to the left or to the yeah. right and to set that up to be able to pick which icon and you could have like 50 icons that people can choose from. And I know my friend who was working on design system and was working on adding an icon to a button spent like all day trying to like get the icons to show up and like do what it needed to do and all this other that, this and that. And the file was like dragging its feet and, yeah. and, and like they were nearly in tears because they also wanted to take PTO that day and couldn't because they couldn't wrap <laughs> this thing up. <laughs> So I, I mean, feel like, yeah. yeah, that's just like, it's, it's like overcomplicated, but to like what, you know, for, for what, for someone just to go and add that button and then add an icon, like pick the icon that they, they need, which you can, I think you can just like take the icon and just drop it into the, you know, like into the component, like you can make your own yeah. button and just hey. throw it in there and auto layout, boom. Right. Like, yeah. um, which I think is a little yeah, I, I feel like you can over rotate on the on the the design file, the like the, the UI library. Yeah, and I, I think it's the same on code, right? It's like you can you can basically add a layer of complexity there that, and sometimes like a necessary layer of complexity if you're dealing with things like, um, you know, making making things more accessible or making it so yeah, it's like you're using the right thing at the right time. Like sometimes complexity is needed. But it, it is, it is. I think that's like one part. I was actually just reading today about um, somebody who was uh, lamenting the fact that um, they didn't know how to organize their design system because they had over 2,000 components. And it's like, 2,000 components? How? I, I don't think that I could... I definitely could not name 2000 components. Like if they're all different and unique, like that is, that just feels nuts. And again, like it's this, it feels like it's that over rotation of um, it's like complexity. Sometimes I feel like it's complexity for the sake of complexity, but even then it's like, if you're doing, even if you're doing design systems, right. I feel like that there is a layer of complexity that um, uh, like does get added when you get into, you know, building out, uh, reusable components, especially in big organizations as well. Um, but I also think, because I don't want to spend too much time on this part of it, because I think it's the uninteresting thing, is goes back to what you were saying around like 
should speed be the thing that we're talking about with this? Because actually, in reality, the concept of a design system is to free up thinking so that you can spend that time that you spend, you know, recreating cards and buttons and like recreating components to do more of like what you're supposed to be doing and the craft of what you're doing, right? As a designer and as a, a dev. Um, it's actually, you know, putting in more thought time into the um, the product process. Um, so like, and, and it kind of goes to a point that um, a guy brought up in the chat around, um, you know, if you promise speed, you need to be ready to prove it at some point. If you promise speed up front, and you're like using that time in another way that still means that you're basically got the same amount of releases or same amount of, you know, same amount of time spent on a release. Like the business isn't going to see that as a um, improvement. They're not going to see that as an improvement on that metric. Um, so I think it can be like a dangerous thing to care about. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think there are so many factors that go into speed and delivery that are outside of the design system. Like even if say like you had a design system, if there were like other technical implementation issues that you still had to work really hard on figuring out or um, the design, the designers could deliver more, except there's no point if engineering can't keep up because they have to, you know, do other like technical security things. Like there's just, the speed kind of the idea of speed gets lost because of, of all these other factors. Um, because I think at the end of the day, people can still go like, well, you only delivered this one feature. I thought this design system was supposed to be fast. Um, <laughs> Cause I, I, I look, yeah. yeah. Like looking back at like the, the features and the products that like the teams I've worked with put out, like I feel like not, there was maybe a little bit of efficiency using a reusable component library, but not to the extent that it was like so prominent because there was so much other baggage of, of other things coming up like technical constraints or dependencies with another team or product decisions, right? Like it, it, it got lost in the, everything seemed like it took the same time regardless if we use the design system or not. It's interesting because it's like, um, yeah, I, uh, I've lost my thread there. Uh, <laughs> I guess what editing's for. Um, so Carissa says that from a design standpoint, uh, they think it can. Our team did a demo at work where we used a design system to build a web page in less than five minutes. Um, and that's the one time I saw it, things succeed was that um, we had a product that had like a working design system that was in maintenance mode. So it was like pretty far along. And um, one of the developers used that to code up a prototype of a product that another team was struggling to build. And the developer built it in like two days. Um, and that ended up getting... Uh, convincing management that this team could handle building this product versus the other team who had been struggling for quite some time. Um, the one time that it, it really showed efficiency and speed. Um, and but so that was just that one time. <laughs> this is, and this is the thing, like this is what I've heard from uh, other companies as well. And I think that this is, this is actually the point that I think is important to make is that it goes back to what I was saying around, like, it's not necessarily a bad thing to talk about if you're framing it in the right way. Um, because I know that the folks at Wires did the same thing. There was a, uh, they, they sort of did a, a task where they were like recreating, uh, they were actually doing it uh, based off of like a plugin they were using to even like make their components even more efficient and the way that it like works in, in uh, Figma especially. Um, and so they did a task of like getting a bunch of designers to do it one way and a bunch of designers to do it the other way to show the like effectiveness of what they were doing. Um, I think if you do that and frame it in that way of, as I said before, like this is going to speed us up and therefore we're going to be able to do X amount more products or we're going to uh, ship X amount more features. I think that's where it's like it can get 
problematic. Like it, it could, it basically, you could be creating a rod for your own back um, because you just end up becoming, uh, I don't know, little buddy feature, feature factory. factory. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, and, and, but it is something that like, I think, you know, places like zero high are to blame um uh a little bit on this because this is you know a narrative that i know that like we've talked about it as well because it's like a really easy thing to a way to show value really quickly um when it is you know what i said before it's like the reality is is that um that time should be being freed up to do more in-depth work like that time should be being freed up to do to for product folks to focus more on their craft and focus more on like what they're doing or to you know have the time to be able to like test things more and then feed those changes back into the product or even better you know test things more discover patterns and feed those into like the design system team and therefore make everything more robust in the future because the thing is is like it goes back to the other thing that we say in almost every episode the design system is never done anyway. It's like, there's always improvements to make and there's always like, um, yeah, it's, it's infrastructure that needs constant maintenance and constant like improvement and iteration. Um, because, you know, not only are you never going to get to the point where it's like perfect and done and we're all, we can all go home and live a happy life. Um, but also things change like user behavior changes. Um, it, it all you know it's like it's something that and i think that that's that's like the really important thing to like um make sure that you're doing if you are talking about speed in your org is to like just make sure that you're framing it in that way of like we're freeing up time to do other things not just to ship faster and have fewer people yeah and that's like kind of what carlos's point was of like you know being more efficient with your workflows to do those things instead of um, turning design into some sort of Henry Ford assembly line, which is totally, I yeah. think that's the thing is people can, can see that aspect, but I think being very clear and saying like, we have new space for like, you know, time to do innovations um, yeah. and, and that type of thing and getting people in that mindset, um, I think is, is super helpful um, and maybe not focusing. Yeah. So much on like the day-to-day -day efficiency of like, we speed up so we can do more, more like, I don't know, production work. Um, but I think maybe we sell efficiency or speed and efficiency wrong. Like we, you know, it's, I think it's also part of it. It's like you have to do a big investment up front. So that does come at a cost. Um, but thinking like, hey, so when we do a rebrand or have to make a sweeping change, we can do that efficiently and quickly. And I think, that's not always what's what's pitched. Um, it's more about like, oh, you know, save our engineers and develop uh, and designers some time. But it's really like those sweeping changes. Um, or if there is an acquisition, we can easily rebrand them or what have you, right? So, um, focusing more on like the the stuff later on down the line, which I can't say everyone worries about. I like to think that they think about it, but then I don't know. I, I, um, I always thought people would think about that and then they like end up leaving the company before that stuff happens. <laughs> it's, it's interesting though. Cause I think it's like a lot of this comes down to the fact that it's like, what's the output? Like, and I think that especially when you, you're dealing with, um, you know, trying to sell the value in of, of the, the design system. Um, that's how a lot of like leaders think is like, cool, but what does this actually give us? Um, and it does come back to, again, something that we've talked about a lot, but it's like, ultimately, what we're talking about is uh, better products, not necessarily faster, cheaper products. <laughs> um, and it's like, because what's the point in doing what we do if what, what we're doing is just creating the same old crap, um, but faster? Like, that just feels like, I don't know, do we all want to work on... Well, it's the production line thing, right? Like, I suppose actually, what I'm just describing there is is uh, the crux of capitalism. But uh, <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, it's like quality and consistency and cohesiveness are all like really important. And it's it's interesting because I've been writing uh, an article that hopefully is going out in the next day or so around uh, patterns and writing patterns. Um, 
which you know we all know is my favorite uh word of the month um but um it kind of like that's where this kind of stuff comes into because it's like the you know patterns don't necessarily like patterns especially don't necessarily make you move faster because patterns make you think about what you're doing more um yes they should provide you the guidance to be able to do things like properly but also patterns are the things that genuinely have the power to like change um to change the world um but like i mean you know not to understate it but it is and it's why like um but it's also like it's a, a opportunity for you to differentiate your brand properly and differentiate your product from other people and um and actually, you know, it's what provides that like extra special source of um, quality is like those those opinionated things. And you can't get to a point where you're um, making those or enshrining those like opinionated um, like concepts or like approaches um, if you're just chipping at the high velocity and not caring about actually improving what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like I'm talking a little bit in circles. Um, I, you know, I like I, I thought about this quite a bit. So it's like I get. So I feel like the the efficiency and the speed really comes if you're having to change something. Yeah. Um, if you're not having to change something, maybe it's not. There isn't that much speed gained. Um, because like it, it's like if you in the olden days before there was like components, you would just open an old file and copy whatever you used before and maybe change the label to the button. And then if you had like a sequence of screens, you would just copy that frame and paste it. <laughs> so like that was the efficiency right there, but like that's not really, it's only when like something changed, like using a new color where you'd have to go in and then manually change everything by, you know, because it, it's not attached to a component. So, um, yeah, I, I feel yeah. like they're. I think like it, it's it's like what 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 do we mean exactly by speed and where is that, um, is is what what we need to think about. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that makes sense. Um, wrap it up. Let's change topic slightly because there's a question in the chat that I don't know is is interesting. Um, from I'm gonna butcher this name, but Rob, you, Rob, you, Rob. Rob, um, oh, that was awful. Uh, that was awful of me. <laughs> anyway, um, for a design system that is inclusive, uh, what's the minimal number of people that should be working on it? Do you have a spare half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think we've. I, I don't know. I'm cu curious. Like, do you have? Do you think that there's like a base level that you need? We have talked about it. I think before. I mean, it's like, I, I would say, so I would, I guess it depends on how many hats these people can wear. <laughs> it's, I, how, how long is a piece of string? Um, I do think that it's like a, um, yeah. I think it's, I think it, there is probably a lovely magic ratio that you can make depending on how big your product org is and all the rest of it. I do think there's probably an upper limit on like how many people are effective in a design system. But there are other, there are companies who are also pushing that at the moment <laughs> by having like, well, I was going to say Spotify were great because they had a huge team, but now they don't have a huge team. So <laughs> yeah, at IBM, when they were creating Carbon, I think they had 68 people. Um, they do not have 68 people working on the design system anymore. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know what the, the, the ratio to like design and devs and design yeah. system people are. I think, I think, but I do think that there is probably a minimum number and it comes down to, um, uh, uh, I think that the minimum number should be, uh, three, like designer, developer, and ideally lead, who is probably also responsible for content slash accessibility, slash slash accessibility slash localization. Slash. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like in an ideal world, I think that it's like if you had a, um, 
like a, a same as a lot of product squads, like a PM designer and engineer, you could probably get a lot done. Um, I think adding in content and accessibility, especially for design systems, is like um, pretty important. There are worlds where like you can have people who are especially who are designers and engineers and PMs who are especially good at content or accessibility, um, and you might not need that to start with. But I do think that like that's a um, minimum. Um, but I do think that that scales as soon as like, it depends how many people you're serving. And I think that like, I've seen upper limits of, well, you were saying what 68, I think it's like standard upper limit for bigger places I've seen is around like 25 to 30. Um, but again, like that's, that's usually pretty big teams. Um, but yes, uh, cool. Okay. Sorry, go on. I feel like I'm trying to think, I think so. IBM has over 280,000 employees. So 68. Jeez. Oh, yeah. The okay, design that, system is like. That feels like a very low ratio. Yeah. I yeah. don't think we've figured it out. Uh, to be honest, I think this is it. I just don't think we've figured it out yet either. Like, I think that design systems are still young enough that we are still figuring out what the right amount is. Um, and actually, you know, for a future episode, um, maybe the correct an amount is zero. Um, but, um, it could be, uh, and that design systems should, as a concept should just be embedded in every single product squad, uh, in standard ways of working. Which, I mean, anyway, that's that's definitely a future episode. <laughs> every every everyone is a design system contributor, which means nobody will be contributing to the design system. Shh. <laughs> everybody everybody owns the design system, so therefore it succeeds no matter what. Um, no, I don't think that that's the case, but I think that this is definitely a topic that we should cover off in a um, in a future episode because I've I've got thoughts that we've already already shared at some point, but uh, I want to share more. Um, okay, well, I'm going to finish this off by uh, just sharing Carlos's question, which we won't answer because I think it's rhetorical. Uh, why do we even need speed? Uh, in many instances, if a structure moves too fast, it breaks apart. <laughs> See early tests of airplanes going supersonic. Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so that's it for this week. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, if you want to chat to us, you can find us on the social media. Um, I'm at Lurk Mufi just about everywhere. These days, mostly hang out on uh, LinkedIn, uh, which you can find me if you look up Luke Murphy Zero Height, uh, or Blue Sky, which is a new one for me. Um, because screw twitter um michelle uh, i'm at soy sauce chin on twitter but i'm not really on twitter so maybe just ignore what i just said um i am on linkedin though so that's probably okay. the best maybe i'll jump on the blue sky band bandwagon i mean it's a pretty happening place i've added about i think 400 followers in the space of three days um, because everybody's just done a mass migration. Uh, Zero Heights also on Blue Sky. Uh, not posting yet, but will be soon. Um, and if you want to email us with any future suggestions, any questions uh, or complaints, um, you can do so at community at zeroheight.com uh, or you can join our Slack community as well at zeroheight.com slash Slack. Uh, the next episode will be back in two weeks. We'll be talking about should we get rid of infinite scroll? Um, which is a very nice uh, deep in the weeds question. Um, oh yeah, we're going heavy at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, that I'm looking forward to. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. And until next time, bye. See y'all.